Hey guys, thanks for joining. So today we're going to talk about, as the introduction uh, uh, was uh, showing you, uh, we're going to talk about logs. So I think that's a that's a pr pretty uh, useful and interesting uh, conversation video. Um, you know we, you know in, in the IT field, you know it's it's the the GUI is is only so valuable or so useful. It only shows you so much, right? Um, there's obviously um, a, a lot of stuff can be pulled from the, you know, from PowerShell or CLI, right? And uh, and uh, you know, um, the same goes for BlueCat. So you know, if you if you want to see some logs, if you want to see what's going on, again, sometimes you don't al you you don't always have you don't see everything um, um, that you would see in the GUI. And um, I'm going to show you where those logs are. I'm going to show you um, some other stuff as well, some useful um, commands that you can run to 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 see other things in BlueCat. And um, I think this is going to be uh, useful no matter what level of uh, of user you are, um, unless you're a read-only user, and then you don't even have access. Or probably don't even know the password to the BDDS or, or the uh, BAM and yeah. So, anyways, I digress. Um, so let yeah, let's start off with uh, the most typical, the most uh, useful of all the logs. The, well, depending on <laughs> what what you're uh, doing or what the problem is, but um, the most typical log that you're going to use uh, most often is the syslog. Okay, and, and just to be very clear, what, what you can see on my screen right now is uh, if I go to var log this is where most of the logs are okay now you have different stuff in there and I'm not gonna go through all of them um, but uh, again speaking about the syslog the syslog is a main system log that will post any system error and informational messages on both the BAM which is a BlueCat address manager and the BDDS which stands for BlueCat DNS DHCP server Okay, so it's going to show a lot of that information. It's also going to show the daemon log details uh, as well. So, um, it, literally just going here, and this is the syslog. Now, this is a lab environment. This is very vanilla. No services are really running on this at all. Um, there hasn't been any back and forth, so you're not really going to see anything, unfortunately, but just letting you know where it is. Okay. All right, so um, there's also a, a log called a JBoss log. So this is the next log. So the JBoss log, uh, which is only on the BAM, shows all interface interface issues and address manager errors. So that's 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 pretty cool. So um, in the BAM, right there, there is a section where you can enable additional uh, verbosity. Okay, and the BAM, and let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So uh, if we go to the administration tab, all right, and then we go to log management. Okay, now we can, like I said before, uh, log level. So in the JBoss log, which uh, again, I'll, I'll show you where it is. It's in the var log directory. When you enable um, additional verbosity, so for example, by default, it's at the warn. You can set info, debug, trace, all right okay and then there's some other stuff that you can enable depending you know what you're looking for but once you enable those logs okay then we'll be able to go into the JBoss JBoss log and actually see what's going on all right so same idea bar log JBoss jetty oh uh, actually, sorry, they they've changed it. I'm, I'm I'm thinking previous versions. It's actually in the server logs now. Okay, so uh, those those logs specifically are in the server log. Okay, so again, you get pretty much everything in the uh, all the law the the BAM uh, uh, showing all the interface issues, address manager errors, and depending on the uh, the verbosity that you have enabled, um, you're going to see a lot more, a lot less. Um, this, of course, again is vanilla, and there's not a lot of stuff going on here. So um, that's that's pretty much it. So apologize there. That is the var log jetty 
uh, server.log. So this is the server.log that shows all that cool information. All right. So uh, the next one we're going to look at is the messages log. Same directory, ls, right? Um, we're going to look at the messages log, and that's system-related messages. So if a system uh, process crashes, it will it will be often reported um, here. So um, okay. So. Again, system crashes, boots, kernel messages, things like that, that's going to be shown in the messages.log. Cool? All right. Um, now, there's also the update log. So when you're applying an update, a patch, security patch, whatever it might be, um, there's a, uh, a log called the update.log. And when, uh, when per uh, performing updates with patches and upgrades on the system, all information and errors are posted in this log. So this is great. I mean, you could tail the log when you're applying a patch, right? So you can literally watch um, um, it, it uh, processing uh, the, the patch successfully or not. Okay, and then again, that's the update.log. Okay, so you'll, you'll literally watch it say success and then success and then just kind of going down the list, right? So if you were to, for example, tail um, update.log you would literally start watching watching that and that's great to see exactly what's going on and making sure because hey sometimes um, what's in the GUI um, doesn't doesn't actually interpret um, what's actually happening in the background right so if a patch fails um, sometimes in the GUI it, it may not even tell you unfortunately and I've seen that enough enough times so Definitely check these logs. Make it a habit when you're applying uh, patches. Okay. Okay. Now um, there's another log um, similar. So it's called the install-details.log. So when performing performing updates uh, and patches and upgrades on on the system of all information and error messages are posted into this log. So this is a similar similar log called install. Install. Um, hmm, okay, it may not. I guess this is okay. So my mistake. It's only called update.log now. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching you and also learning at the same time. Apparently, all right, cool. So um, so again, update var dash log that dash uh, uh, forward slash updates dot log is the log that shows you what's going on okay so there's other logs here as well um, so for example ntp d.log which is before I even talk about it let me actually get there first less ntpd um, let's see ntpd okay um, yeah there's nothing there's no log created because I don't have it enabled but um, I might actually apply for the install that dash in details log as well but uh, the ntpd.log which you'll definitely have okay is all NTP messages with the NTPD service are posted in this log so if you're having any type of NTP issues if uh, you know if zone transfers keep failing um, because of uh, time issues and things like that it's 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 definitely a good idea to go into the NTP D log and see what's going on it might be uh, very useful okay so those are some of the typical logs that uh, you would look at uh, for uh, troubleshooting get uh, more visibility in what's going on now some other cool stuff and this, this might be a little random here but some other stuff that uh, you may not already know, may you may not you may know, is uh, you know when you're performing backups, right? Database backups. So again, this is the BAM, and um, uh, you want if you want uh, if you want to see where the backups are, um, it's very simple. It's in the data backup directory. Okay, I don't have any backups, but that's where they would be. Okay, um, another cool place that you could go is let's see here 
Um, something else. Well, let me show you this. Um, I think DNS services are running on here. Let me let me uh, double check. Actually, let me double check. It may not be. Okay. Let me quickly add uh, add something here. Okay. If I go to servers, hopefully I can deploy DNS only. Yes. Okay, it's committing. That means it's communicating. So it deploys success successfully. There's a green uh, check there. All right. So here's a here's another uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh, um, Function that you may not be familiar with. It's called uh, PS PSM client. So PSM client. It's case sensitive. So the cap P capital P capital L. Uh, sorry, yeah, P capital P capital C, and then um, you can either write node get or set set when you want to set set a um, set something or get just to just to see what's what's available. So I'm gonna hit get. So hit enter. And I'm going to see all the different um, options here. And um, so, for example, you can see you can the HP services. You can see if that's running or not. We can see uh, if it's in Proteus control, which is it managed by the BAM, which it is. DNS enable equals one, meaning DNS uh, service is enabled. NTP services are enabled, and by default they are. SNMP services are not enabled, and you can enable them right in here. And uh, just to just to clarify, now uh, PSM or Platform Service Manager, it's used to manage services on BlueCat Address Manager, um, and also the BDDS, which is the DNS DHCP server. Also, uh, historically, it was also called Adonis. Funny enough, in a controlled manner, with its main goal of eliminating race conditions, it 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 controls tasks such as enabling, disabling, as well as monitoring of system services. So that's all cool. Now here's a here's something that you may not know. When uh, let's say for example um, you're decommissioning a, a BDS, a BDDS. All right. So what you want to do is you want to actually let me give me a second. Let me show you. All right. So let's say, for example, maybe you're consolidating services, for example, and you say, hey, um, you know, um, part of the decommission process is that we want to disable the server. We want to make sure that once, um, when we disable the server, that, uh, you know, nothing's going to break um, and, you know, you're, you're able to properly decommission it without uh, something bad happening. Because if something bad does happen, you want to be able to enable that service fairly quickly, right? Um, you don't want to just, if it's virtual, for example, you don't want to uh, you know, tell the VM team, hey, shut down this server, we don't need it anymore. And then, you know, depending on when, you know, um, when they're available, they shut down the server. But imagine <laughs> you didn't want, you, we made a mistake, you know, somewhere in this process, and we actually need that server back up. And you know how long it can take. It can take days. If it's an emergency, then maybe it could be quicker than that. But you don't want to go there. So usually the process is you want to disable the server, okay? And then after a few days, a week or so, then you eventually decom, decom that server completely. Now here's a trick. Um, here's a here's a here's a I don't know if it's a bug or or uh, or, or whatnot. But when you disable a server funny enough and let me actually do that so I click on the server imagine I, I want to decommission this I'm going to de disable the server okay so server is disabled right um, you can see that right here and if I go to servers the status that's disabled the way I interpret a disabled server is that server is not doing anything right um, I can't deploy to it um, DNS and DHCP services shouldn't be running um, for you know it's disabled right 
something's disabled, you can't do anything, right? That's my understanding, but it's not quite like that. So if this is the server here, and I'm going to do this again, run the same command, PSM client node get, which just gets me a list of everything. And if I go here, I can see DHCP is disabled because it equals zero, but check this out. DNS is still enabled. That's not what I want. So imagine you're in the process of decomming a server and you think that disable actually disable services. It does not. Uh, to disable the service, you have to run the following command. PSM client node set. Okay, it's set. And then this name here, whatever, whatever I want to set here. So it's DNS hyphen enable and it equals zero okay and it says it's okay so if I run the get command again it is now disabled so that's a little trick I realized through um, you know my experience with blue cat so I thought you guys uh, like to see that okay so another let me clear this so another uh, cool little uh, thing that you can do is let's say you're you're troubleshooting DNS and uh, you know you want to you want to view the name.com file or you want to look at the DB files or or uh, things like that you may you may not know exactly where that is here right because sometimes when you add a, add a DHCP option DNS option right and that option seems like it's not taking or you know it's the option is not working for some reason you know you added it it's in the GUI you can see it there um, but it's just not working. So sometimes what you got to do is, um, or even for example, you created a zone. Um, it's deployable. It should be there, but it's not resolving, right? Uh, sometimes what you need to do is, you, again, you need to go in the logs. And you got to figure out what's going on. So uh, Blue Cat actually has some uh, quick little uh, links, um, aliases, right? So if you just type in aliases on a BDDS, enter. Uh, you can see a few different things here. So, um, for example, if you want to quickly look at um, the dhcpd.com file, right? Just type in ldhcpd.conf. Okay. Um, I mentioned DNS, so let's let's look at DNS now. I want to I want to go to the name.com file. So a quick uh, a quick alias I can use is lnamedconf. Okay. So l name conf, and I'm in the name name.conf. I'm in a I'm using less. It's using less automatically, so I can actually see everything in here. Okay, and again, not much going on here. Hey, look, ddexpress.com. That's pretty cool. I'm joking. Um, yeah, so you can you can see a lot of different information here. Uh, you can, you have the conf file. Right, so you can start looking into the, the configuration for the zone, and you can start looking at the, the DB, and you can actually see the, the multiple different uh, uh, records that have been created for that zone. Okay, that, that 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 zone manages. So that's pretty cool. You can see any options that are configured um, here, and 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 whatnot. So yeah. So again, aliases allows you to see. Let me clear that. So alias gives you some uh, quick ways of um, um, getting to specific directories in terms of troubleshooting DNS or DHCP. So I think that was a that's a that's a interesting one as well. So um, when it comes to DHCP, I don't have the role, but um, if I did add the role, uh, you know what? Everything's quite easy to do. Let's go. Let's go here. Let's go to deployment roles. Oh, no, never mind, I do have the role. Okay. So let's say, for example, I wanted to look at the leases file. Now, I'm not going to have any leases because this is, a, again, this is a lab environment and I don't have a client that has uh, requested a lease. But if, let's say, I wanted to look at the leases file, right, uh, what I could do is, let's see here, less space. Var, so it's var state DHCP DHCP D dot leases. Okay, so I don't have anything here. I apologize, but <laughs> what you would see is you would see all the leases for all the subnets listed here, 
right? You can see the state of those leases as well. So for example, if a client's not getting a specific IP address, or uh, if you want to see that configuration, you'll be able to see it here. So that's really valuable um, when you're troubleshooting DHCP related uh, issues, all right? So again, var state DHCP, DHCPD dot leases. Okay, let me just close out of that. Um, let me go back to the BAM for a moment. Now, yeah, let me clear this. Now, have you guys ever dealt with an issue where, let's say, for example, the BAM, the GUI, you know, the, the database is running. If you run a top, right, you can see, you can see the ser services are running, um, but uh, sometimes the GUI is not uh, visible for whatever reason. Now, Java, specifically, right, that's going to, you know, the GUI is running there. Um, but let's say, for example, the GUI is not available for whatever reason. Sometimes, uh, let's say, deployments fail, or let's say a deployment gets stuck and it doesn't continue. What do you do? Call support, right? I guess you could totally do that, um, but you could also uh, do a little little troubleshooting yourself. Now, there is a command where um, it's it allows you to stop and start Proteus. Uh, services and Proteus again um, is an old or maybe I didn't even mention that maybe in a previous vi video I did so I'm gonna say again Proteus is an old uh, uh, name for the BAM or the Blue Cat Address Manager okay um, and in in the logs and whatnot it's still called Proteus so if you ever see that reference that's what it means um, but yeah what I can do here is again if if my if the GUI is freezing or deployments are stuck, and I can't I can't stop that uh, that deployment from continuing. It's just con it's just going on. Sorry, I can't stop that uh, deployment from stopping. And uh, there is no stop button, right? If you're if you're familiar with BlueCat, there is no stop button. It's either going to continue um, until until. Uh, uh, it'll just continue. There is no stop button, so there's really not much you can do other than this. So if you type in, again, this is only on the BAM, Proteus server, which is .sh, so it's a script, and you type in stop. Now let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'll make this a little smaller. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Proteus stop. So again, GUI doesn't load for some reason, services are running, something's happening on the server. Maybe, for example, let's say there's uh, some API calls that, uh, you know, someone built a script and they, they went sideways and, and you just got to stop this from happening and you don't want to shut it down. Uh, you don't want to force a complete shutdown, hey, because maybe that uh, corrupts the database or something like that. And you don't want to do that. You just want to stop the GUI part. You just want all that, all that, uh, all that stuff to stop and, and leave the database as is, right? So if you type in Proteus stop, okay, stop, put the window back up, okay, and if I refresh this, uh, it's loading. Oh, look, yeah, okay, so I just stopped Proteus. Now, it's still stopping. <laughs> All right, now I want to start it back up. Proteus, server, start, enter. All right, so give us a few minutes, but what should happen is that the GUI will restart again. And there we go. All right, now I can log back in, and everything looks good. Awesome. Minimize that. Okay, so again, sorry, I apologize. It's a bit random here. Um, I should have planned this out a little bit better. But um, again, we talked about the DHCP leases file, right? Um, which was var state DHCP DHCP dot leases. There's also the DHCP configuration, which is in the etc forward slash dhcpd.conf okay uh, it's not there because uh, I haven't uh, assigned that role but uh, that's where you would go so etc forward slash dhcpd.conf and that's your configuration file for DHCP oh you know what 
maybe if I went to the actual VDDS server, <laughs> let's try that again. Um, less etc dhcp d.com. There it is. All right. Okay. There's nothing there again, um, but that's that's where your configuration file would be. Okay. And uh, also um, another another good one is where so if you're doing dynamic DNS, there's a, a queue uh, file on the BDDS. Uh, and you can you can see that for dynamic DNS. So less it's var oops var state DHCP default dot q. Again, there's nothing there. But this is again dynamic DNS updates uh, queue file on the BDDS. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Um, so there's other commands. These are, these are more Linux related commands. Uh, this is this is Linux. So um, some commands that you might want to look at, for example, uh, for example, you do a def m, right? So um, this provides a list of your directory and um, uh, dash m in, in megabytes. So this shows you your partition sizes and it shows you the size and make sure that everything's health, healthy. So rem remember, this is a good note, is your boot directory partition. Uh, make sure that's less than 50%, okay? If it's more than 50%, um, you um, uh, patches and upgrades, especially upgrades, may fail, okay? Um, and you don't want that to happen, and there's no there's no obvious, uh, before you apply a patch, it doesn't say, oh, your disk is at over 50%, warning, warning. Right? No, it's not. That's not going to happen. So um, make sure you you kind of uh, unless you're going to create some type of automation to check this, um, you gotta you gotta kind of manually make sure that that doesn't exceed. And why would it exceed? There's really no reason why it should exceed um, past uh, if as long as you set the uh, the the proper uh, disk space on the BDDS. Right? You didn't cheap out and said, oh well, that's a recommendation, but we're not going to really use that much. Don't do that. Um, it, it's recommended for a reason. Keep the disk space um, at uh, the recommended based on based on the version you're running. Every newer version um, usually requires a little bit more disk space. Okay, so um, check your disk space, and that's how you do it. Some other cool commands: free dash m. Right, this tells you exactly how much uh, RAM is on your uh, BDS. How much is a total? how much RAM you have uh, used using 190 megs free right and then uh, buffer cache and a total um, used is 668 so I take the total or the what's available 668 plus um, uh, what's used right and, and and that's that's sort of or sorry the number here is uh, the buffer cache and then free is equal to what's available Right, so um, or more or less uh, based on the use, but uh, swap memory also is uh, five gigs, and free is um, pretty much the same thing. So five gigs. So I'm not using any swap memory, which is good. If you notice this number, higher any higher than uh, zero, then um, I would start looking at why it's starting to use swap memory. It may not have enough um, uh, buffer cached uh, memory. So that's a that's a good warning sign that there might be something wrong and uh, that if it's using uh, the swap memory um, services um, uh, can be reduced in, in terms of speed so that's something to keep uh, note of as well um, there's also history so you can see all the history of everything you've uh, done or anyone else has done right so that's pretty cool you also have uh, TCB dump right um, you can run TCB dump on your server uh, let me clear this actually clear so for example if you were trying to you know troubleshoot DNS or DHCP and you want to get uh, the logs you can run TCP dump directly on your uh, BDDS right uh, a typical command would be you know that t TCP dump dash I interface any any interface port for example let's say if you were troubleshooting uh, DNS port 53 if you're troubleshooting uh, DHCP you probably want 67 and port 60 60 uh, 68 <laughs> right and then this you know kind of create in depending on what type of verbosity you want 
and then you would just kind of specify where you want to save that uh, that file, right? Give it a name, logs, and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's you can run t uh, TCP dumps here, packet captures right on the BDS. So that's that's pretty cool. Another reason why you want to have SSH access uh, to that server. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think of another. Um, you do have the RNDC. Um, commands as well so you can run different command RDC to, to flush DNS to reload um, uh, uh, DNS uh, m multiple different things you can run RDC on your DNS server um, uh, for multiple different uh, things oops RDC stat okay so I need to configure it but yeah you do have that option as well so that's pretty cool and the last one I, I guess I would show you is if there's again TCP dump. There's also a, a, um, the SNMP walk, right? So you can run SNMP walk on the server, um, on the BAM, on the BDDS. If you want to try to uh, make sh make sure that there's a communication between the BAM and the BDDS for uh, mo monitoring, right? So a typical command for uh, version uh, two would, would be dash v, right? Um, and then the community string and uh, whatever the string would be doo -doo -doo. and then the IP address of the uh, uh, if this was running on the BAM the IP address of the BDDS right so that's a typical walk so there's a lot of different uh, tools that you can use that are pre-configured uh, pre on on these BDDS's so that's and the in the BAM so that's pretty cool um, I hope I hope this was uh, somewhat valuable to you. I hope maybe you, you learned something new. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you have any, um, you know, we can. There's definitely some conversations about you know how to access the database uh, instead and uh, how to run queries on that. I can definitely help you out with that as well. Not a recommendation by Blue Cat. I think it's not even allowed to be honest. But um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, when you have root access, <laughs> that sounds like a, I think that's a little little bit of an evil, evil laugh there. Anyways, uh, I really appreciate everyone listening, and I hope you like the video. Check out ddiexpress.com uh, and uh, reach out to us if you have any questions, if you need any type of support, automation, integrations, consolidations, migrations. We can help you out. Talk to you later.